Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 11 of my BB-8 version 3 project. I've basically got this mechanically driving around and doing various things, which you can see the best testing in part 10. So I tried moving mass around and doing various things, ended up putting it back where it was. We've now got the head moving in all axis and rotating, and we've got the flywheel spinning so it can spin on the spot, and it can drive and lean and stabilize, and everything looks really good. So now it's time to do some stuff about the cosmetics, but importantly, we need to put the sides of the ball on. So that'll also stop it tipping over, which I've managed to do if it leans too far. So that's gonna be really interesting to see how it performs. We're also gonna put the skins on, which are gonna make this ball a lot smoother. I tried filing it and uh, rasping it down last time. But there's still a few flat sections on it. So hopefully once all of the flat skins are on, it's gonna be super. So let's have a look at the CAD for the sides of the ball. Here's the CAD, I've been trying to work out how to fit the skins on, so obviously we've got these six circles and eight triangles basically, so I've been planning out where the circles should go. Obviously the blue part in the middle is the barrel I've got now and the orange parts are the sides I need to stick on, which need to be a frame. Um, obviously I need access to get inside still to change the batteries and all of that stuff, and that was the idea of building this thing with no sides on. So as before I can remove some of the panels and we can get into the middle of it. Now this is how the skins should be attached, so the uh, circular panels should sort of run around so they're offset. So as BB-8 rolls along, you see these circles coming round, uh, rather than having them all dotted around the middle. So you can't easily see that it's only running in one axis, and this is how I did version 2. Um, in version 2, the barrel was much thinner, so it meant that in fact I could have a completely removable circle and a completely removable triangle on each side. They were slightly more offset than this, so that worked. Uh, but they were pretty much set so that um, e every other circle overlapped the middle. But obviously with this wider barrel I can't do that, so if I'm going to glue the skins on again, then I've got some issues because uh, all of the circles will overlap the barrel now, which is a bit of a problem really. So uh, what I've decided to do instead is um, style it slightly differently. So this is what I'm going to do, which isn't quite as good, they're offset but not quite as much. So only four of them touch the middle, and the side ones only are sort of butted up to it, so they'll be about halfway over this orange ring. Obviously they need to be stuck on, and the triangles need to be stuck on. Uh, but at least two of them there um, are completely removable, and that gives me access. So it's not quite as nice situation, and as it drives you're going to see those spots coming around a bit more. But as I bank and steer and do sorts of things, hopefully it won't be too obvious. So essentially what I'm going to print are these orange frame parts, and then we'll get those stuck on and glue the skins on, and they need to be glued on really to make the, bo the ball smooth and make everything perfectly uniform. I spent some time cutting those up and lying them as flat as I can on the bed. Obviously all these parts are curved with curved insides, so we're going to have to print all of this on support material, um, even these pieces of course. There wasn't really an easy way of cutting that up, and I did pretty much the same thing with version 2, although these parts are actually bigger in that one because of course the cheese was smaller in the middle. So hopefully this will be fine, but there's quite a lot of printing there, mainly because of the support material. Here are the parts for one side, so these were all printed on support material, some of them I've pulled away, so this is the support material, and that's the piece, which has come out not too badly. Some of the inside surfaces are a bit messy, but on the whole okay, there's uh, another one which has come out okay, and some of these are still stuck on their support material, which uh, whoops, should separate pretty easily. Just need to work on that, oh there we go. So it has some interface layers that are weaker layers. You can see on the top surface of the support material, that means that detaches pretty easily. They're not perfect, but um, best that can be expected for parts floating in the air, really. So some of this will be solvent welded together. This should fit in here, I think, or the other one. 
and then all these should roughly anchor down they're going to be screwed on and solvent welded onto the cheese so i need to assemble this put all these pieces end to end and hope for the best so getting there with that got that hoop put together screwed on i've just recessed the screws there slightly which i didn't put in cad but i just used the drill bit so the next part to go on is going to be this piece and that needs to screw on there and be fitted in there so you'll notice it comes over the edge slightly so i probably need to loosen these and lever this back a bit obviously the plastic has warped slightly in printing as did the ball in fact that actually should be all right and i just need to kind of force it together as i go but there we go it's come out pretty well i think all right so it's a ball shape now just about obviously we've got those two panels they seem to give me plenty of uh space to access things that should be more than enough for servicing it obviously i'll never be able to get the uh parts out from the inside but i'm not intending to as long as i can get underneath here i can turn this round and flip the trousers over and i can get to the main drive wheel if it comes off or needs replacing or something then that's going to be fine so this is looking pretty tough it lines up pretty well i did overzealously rasp the edge of the ball off so some of it uh somewhere there's a bit of an edge on it uh, not even too bad there mostly there for instance but if i put something flat on then definitely i did over rasp the edge of the ball so the contour is okay once that panel comes right up to that curved edge so now it's time to make some panels and stick them on the panels are going to be made in exactly the same way they were last time so here's one from version 2 it's one of the ones that comes off and it's stuck on with a bungee so this is foam pvc board it's two mil thick it's basically like rigid plastic but it's actually a really high density foam i've got a sheet of it here and i form these up by heating them up and pressing them over a dome and that gave me a thing that looks like this and obviously this is one of the ones i cut out for version two and in fact i'm going to use these as templates again because they've got the exact shape on there which i spent quite a long time working out um, obviously that one would have fitted in there so there we go and then obviously circles for the circular sections there's eight of these and six circles and that's 14 altogether so i have to form up 14 bits of this foam pvc and then cut the parts out and glue them on all over and i'm using gorilla glue to stick them on which basically foams up it's got a sort of gap filling element it expands to fill the gaps so that works really well on those panels will stay on version 2 really well i'm not going to show this process on video because i went through it last time so check out the previous build to see me forming the sheets it's not very exciting to see and then the next clip in this video is going to be coming back with all of these domes made i've done them hooray i've done 14 of them and i've already cut out some circles out of these or at least one or two of them so i use this globe that i use it's the other half of the globe i didn't use for my version 2 build popped it on there drew around it and cut out two of these which fit onto the droid so i now need to get the uh, last cut out from version 2 with the triangle pieces make one of those and then try and map out where these go all over the version 3 droid i've just drawn all over the ball with a pen where i think these go based on the edges here and there's enough to sort of take a cue from all of this to get these um, circles on because they all overlap the outside a little bit apart from those and i've cut one of these out using the template from last time and kind of just roughly checked that it roughly fits in there some of these are going to need to be trimmed slightly i made these ends too long so i could trim them down to butt up to each other last time but it seems to fit in there so i think the best thing to do is get these made and stick them on all over and then i can place the triangles and then it should be plain sailing obviously nothing's put absolutely perfect and it's really hard to get everything placed when there's nothing to see where the other side goes exactly so um it's going to be a bit of an estimation the first thing i want to do though is put these panels on and i need to build an internal frame to go in here that plugs into this gap because at the moment these are pretty rigid but you can push them in so i don't think it's going to survive being driven on so i need to just build a kind of frame that plugs into the hole so we'll 3d print those get these panels made and painted up then it should be easy I've designed this piece to go behind that panel, which is uh, fairly simple. The outside uh, radius matches that of the ball, and the sides are cut straight, which matches the hole in the panels I've got there. So it's going to be printed on support material. Here's the preview in slicer, so all the green is support material, which holds up that bridge. 
and it just about fits on the Taz bed so that's what uh, this uh, thing represents so hopefully that's going to print fine it's going to take quite a while but I need two of them and hopefully it will be fine Here it is, that's come out pretty well, I've already removed the support material and on the whole that's as usual, there's a bit of mess on the bottom but it's a pretty clean print and it should be pretty strong to drive on so the uh, hole here isn't quite round but it's pretty good and this fits in pretty well, I just need to squeeze that in and that should seat in there nicely. So of course the panels will fit onto that. I'll just glue that in there and then it should pop in nicely and then we can get on with painting the panels up and sticking them on. There we go, so that seems to fit pretty well. I've just glued that piece on the inside and oh, it's a pretty tight fit. I could probably do with some sort of turn to lock or something like that or I might just use like a Ninja Flex push fit part to hold that in but we'll see how it goes once I'm driving. Not sure how easy that is to see, but I'm just scoring the panels in. So uh, basically drawing around various cake tins and things, and I made a little template to etch that part in, went around a pen cap, things like that. Some of these where there's no colour change, I've gone and lined them, which will show through the primer and the paint, but the rest of it is just scored. So uh, it's fairly okay. Some of the times I've gone over the lines, but once it's painted up, no one will know, but pretty much the same as version two. So I need to get the rest of these done, get them primed, masked off and painted. I've painted up some of the panels and I'm now gluing them on. I'm trying to work my way around, placing the triangle pieces and getting everything aligned. Obviously there's a lot of tape holding it up over to try and get the pieces pulled together properly and to try and get them in the right place so they come nicely on this edge for instance where that panel fits in. It's several days later and all of the panels are on so Let's just spin that round. I had a few issues where um, glue seeped under the tape and then it pulled off bits of the paint, unfortunately, when I pulled the tape off that was holding the panels up. Some are much worse than others. There's one, and there's a really bad one. So um, that's going to need to be touched up when I eventually paint it. Um, the panels don't all align amazingly. There's a few gaps. Obviously, this is one of the removable ones. So um, it is going to have to be weathered, unfortunately. Probably more than last time. Okay, maybe not that much. It's never going to be a clean, shiny droid, uh, basically, because it's already fairly ruined. The foam PVC is easy to score to put these details on, but it's already very soft as well, um, which means it is going to get trashed as I roll around on things. But on the whole, I'm not too unhappy with it. Most of the panels line up. I do have to sort out cable management because the cable's in there. The other side is much worse, in fact. Kind of bang on the outside panels as it drives along. That's just a case of... Uh, attaching those somehow so they don't but apart from that we should be ready to give it a drive let's give that a drive then with the skins on um, obviously the ball is smoother than it was which means the head should run better and it should run better on the floor as well but we'll see so um, for now I can obviously turn the head all around I still need to sort out uh, some better control there I can move my head all around and that seems pretty good so uh, Let's just drive forwards. Hmm, still a bit of head wobble, but I haven't smoothed out the data going to the servos, so it's essentially um, potentially still wobbly, and I've still got those Ninja Flex linkages. But uh, yeah, so the um, I haven't got the side panels on because they fall off, and also the wires are really catching on one side that I showed you. So. Um, yeah, there's a couple of issues with the scraping there and that's just the wires on that uh, the droid's left hand side just scraping there in the ball unfortunately but um, 
Apart from that, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, I could do with PID controlling those servos because they're still driven by the IMU, like the motors. But um, of course, they don't, uh, they're not PID controlled, they're just reactive, just adding the amount in degrees from the IMU basically onto them. And uh, that's how it works. So I need to PID control those the same as the main drive motors, and that will smooth things out and also smooth out that head still, which I mentioned last time. Right, let's just try and steer around in a in a circle here. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's quite good with the partial sides of the ball on. Obviously, it looks like it's tipping over at some points, but of course the um, side panels that are currently not fitted are not um, completely straight. They're off center, so you'll see as I drive forward, they wobble off center. But that's actually not wobble in the droid, it's just that the panels are off center. So it looks like it's wobbling side to side, but in fact it's going in a dead straight line, uh, which is confusing. And that's me steering, there we go. So that's all good. And of course I can spin on the spot, so uh, let me get my flywheel the right way around. There we go. The center of gravity is a bit higher than it was. So now steering with the head as well isn't necessary. I'm much better off just steering with the um, kind of the trousers really. There I go, that's nice. Now I've got, whoops, wish I had more space to drive really. I'm stuck on the edge of the cloth now. Yeah, lumps in the floor, always an issue. All right, let's just drive around that way. Yeah, steering is working pretty well and it's pretty stable coming out of the turn. So yeah, having that extra bit of sides on the ball, I have to be careful not to drive on the bit where it's cut really tight. But on the whole, it can take those corners really nicely. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Right, good. You'll notice I haven't put LEDs in the ball. Um, that's quite challenging with this one because the cheese is so much wider than version two. So the panels don't really, where the orange parts are at least, um, overlap the edge. So I could have sort of filed through the plastic to put a channel in for LEDs, but I decided not to in this. I might put some in these panels and I might also come back and make replacement panels for these alternatives that have various things in. So there may be other features. If I can get a fold out arm in the, um, sort of 10 to 20 mil thickness here, then that's still an option. So I guess I could have a, a fold out tool arm where a panel opens and then out of the back of that folds another thing. We might be able to get some length on it. It's a bit challenging though, because there's not much space actually in the droid there with the uh, whole thing tilting to put any mechanics or anything. So uh, that's an option that I may come back to. Uh, the rest of the details on the ball will eventually get done in painting, but next time I'm gonna work my way up to the head and try and get some of those panels on some of the detail. And I really wanted to do a partly cutaway head like in the Star Wars Episode 7 Visual Dictionary, so have a look for that image online uh, where you can actually see some details in the head. That's gonna help me make it much lighter by only having sort of half of it covered with panels. But hopefully it should be fairly true to the book at least. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel to check out more updates on this project and other projects, including my life-size Ultron suit and of course Hulkbuster. All right, that's all for now.